races into the 2012 Firestone Indy Light season and the championship battle is still a long way from being decided. Veteran Gustavo Yakuman put his name in the running with a victory on the streets of Belle Isle in Detroit just two weeks ago. Gustavo Yakuman for the second time picks up a win here in the Firestone Indy Lights. A big change for these young drivers as they take back to the ovals, this time the Milwaukee Mile. Points leader Esteban Guerrieri looks to repeat at Milwaukee and keep his hold on the championship with Tristan Vautier and Sebastian Saavedra both working close behind. The Firestone Indy Lights Milwaukee 100 is next. Welcome to the historic Milwaukee Mile, the oldest continually operating racetrack in the world. That's where you'll find us as we get set to drop the green flag on the sixth race from the 2012 Firestone Indy Lights Championship, the Milwaukee 100. Hi again, everyone, along with our driver analyst, Ari Leyendijk Jr. I'm Mike King. Welcome to the Mile. Ari, this is a tough racetrack, made even tougher by the fact that these drivers are having to do it all in just one day. Yeah, this is a one-day show, the practice, qualify, and race. Very physically and mentally challenging for these drivers. Milwaukee, very tight track, not a lot of banking, so you'll see a lot of great action, especially towards the end of the race. Well, we've got a great championship as we get set for our sixth race of the season. Five drivers within 50 points of one another. Tristan Vautier will be on pole. He now with the bonus point, now just 14 points behind Esteban Guerrieri. And certainly one guy who's accustomed to one-day shows, he's standing by downstairs with the third member of our broadcast team, Jake Query. 24 hours ago, he was racing a midget in Putnamville, and now birthday hat and all. Happy birthday, Brian Clausen, your seventh Firestone Indy Light start. You'll roll off ninth. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, glad to be back. I had to take a little time off from the light series and, and did the 500 and uh, glad to be back here with Fan Force United. Got a, a great opportunity with them to be here at Milwaukee and uh, in Iowa next week. So uh, excited about it and uh, uh, hopefully we can make our way to the front today. Is it tough to reacclimate from one kind of car to the next and going back and forth? Uh, I mean, a little bit, but I think it's uh, just a mindset. You got you to turn it on, turn it off. And uh, if I tried to drive this thing like I did my midget at Putnamville last night, it probably wouldn't work too well. So um, they're so different that uh, you, you know, it takes a lap or two to get you, you know, kind of back, you know, where am I, what am I doing? And, uh, uh, but after that, it's, it's kind of like riding a bike, just comes back to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate right. it. He's got the birthday hat here, guys. And four times out of those six starts, he's got a top five finish. It's been a myriad of different winners here in the Firestone Indy Lights. Take a look. Green, it's time to go. We are racing across the line. Gautier, the French to the inside. Oh, Yakuman got into the back of Munoz. Oh, oh. time. Ouch. Tristan Gautier, a perfect race weekend. Doesn't get any better than that. Oh, oh, oh wow. again. Side by side, heading to one. Carboni on the inside. Oh, oh contact. Oh. The rear tires were still driving. Sebastian Saavedra for the fourth time will win in Firestone Indy Lights. Here's a long day. Taking a look up the inside into one. Uh, is that going to be an over-under? Yep. Oh. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Esteban Guerrieri will see the twin checkers, and he will be able to call himself a winner at Long Beach. But they want to go four wide down the main straightaway. Oh, oh, touch, oh two touch. cars, big hit. All oh, those three ways. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, taking a huge risk here. Oh. Did he hit the ball there? I think he did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. They split them. That's two in a row for Esteban Guerrieri and Firestone Indy Lights. Oh, oh, baby. He got right up over the rear end. He got a battle for the lead as he faked to the outside, then moved oh, to the inside. Our first lead change here today. Gustavo Yakovin holds on and wins it. Just about time to go racing at the Milwaukee Mile as all the cars have fired and obviously now on track, rolling through the front straight. Firestone Indy Lights on the NBC Sports Network, and uh, you can take a look there at the top of the screen and see the drivers as they run on track now as we complete this lap. And Ari. Butterflies here, only 13 cars, uh, but still the start is going to be very important as far as a quick jump, particularly if you're in that second or third row. Yeah, this is a, a pretty difficult place to pass, and uh, a good start is definitely crucial in any race. Coming down that long back straightaway. Now, let's keep in mind, this is only a mile track. This is a short oval. In fact, only Iowa is shorter in terms of uh, oval distances. All right. We've heard so many drivers over the course of, of practicing qualifying sessions say, I kind of look at this course, the, the turns at either end, almost like 
fast road course or street course yeah, turns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because Milwaukee is so flat and the and the corners are, you know, although it's a mile, it feels so tight because there isn't much banking and it's very challenging for the drivers that it does feel like a quick road course corner. Well, let's take a look at Ari's winning ways as we get set to go green here at the Milwaukee Mile. Ari? Well, definitely tire management. 100 laps on these tires is a lot for Milwaukee because you're leaning on that right rear so long. A good balance is very important. Um, not a lot of prep here and definitely restarts and for sure for, towards the end of the race. Pace car is going to roll off the track. Tristan Vautier, Victor Carboni will bring the field to the green flag on a gorgeous day at West Allis, and they're already dicing as they come to the line. Saavedra. Man, how about Sebastian Saavedra there trying to make a move early? Saavedra, a very, very good start. Slost in a second. Let's look if Munoz can take advantage. I think he will. He'll. Oh, no, he'll be in fourth. So Sebastian Saavedra, one of those AFS Andretti cars, he's running for the championship this year after a full season in IndyCar one year ago. And he's going to run second with the first lap complete, but our pole sitter will be the race leader with one of 100 complete. So Tristan Vautier, Ari, he gets a good uh, good jump on the field as the rest of the field does battle behind him. Yeah, Vautier, really good start. If you look at Munoz down there, he's using the black tarmac. There's two different types of tarmac here at the racetrack, and the balance is different on each of them. So he made a good inside pass, so look for that to be a key factor being able to get down low and use that. Yeah, some great views there through three and four. Now onto the front straight. Four winners in five races this year. This young man is one of those winners, is Tristan Vautier. Won the season opener at St. Petersburg, leading every lap from the pole. And he would love nothing more than to make up some ground on the championship leader, Esteban Guerrieri. 14 points separate Vautier from Guerrieri as we watch some of the race in the pack. This is second place. Good battle developing here off of turn number four. Yeah, Carbone inside. Here he moves. comes. Very, very good run off that corner. So it looks like he has the inside here, but let's see if he can make it stick. Victor Carboni Ari, is another one of those drivers wanting a good race here because he wants as many points as possible. He comes in fourth in the championship. Side by side wow. through one and two there. It looks like Saavedra had a really good line, was able to keep the momentum off the top side there and, and regain second place. You know, Ari, you have experience at this racetrack uh, in, in one of these cars. You, you've been here before. G give me an idea for how these teams are handling this racetrack right now, what they told their driver before the start of the race. Well, it's, it's really important to keep the tires underneath you. Uh, Voce springing out to the front looks really promising right now, but later that could bite him because uh, 100 laps on these tires is a lot of wear and tear out for the for this type of track. So Carbone right now looks to be stronger than Saavedra, but it also is very hard to pass here. Once you get right behind another car, that arrow wash definitely around here becomes so evident, and it's very hard to make a, a clean pass. We have seen this before, Ari. Last year, it was Gary Airy who led all 100 laps here, and this seems to be a pattern when it comes to a driver being able to jump out at the start and kind of pull away from the rest of the field as Vautier right now working on a two second lead but the drivers running second third and fourth they can't get away from each other yeah n now you look at Munoz making the pass because of Carbone was very close oh, to Saavedra he's got him he's got him yeah he was very close and he, he picked up a big understeer and you can see that when you do get close to another driver they almost need to make a mistake for you to get by so being out in front like Vautier is definitely an advantage so Carlos Munoz is Going to pick up third place. He'll try to reel in his teammates, Sebastian Saavedra. Tristan Vautier is the leader at the Milwaukee Mile. Firestone Indy Lights on NBC Sports Network is brought to you by TireRack.com. Research, buy, deliver, install. Tire Rack. With Jay Query and Ari Lyon Dyke Jr., I'm Mike King. Welcome back to the Milwaukee Indy Fest, Milwaukee 100 here on the NBC Sports Network. Under caution, we've just completed 17 of the 100 laps that makes up this event. And here's the reason the caution flag is flying in West Allis, Wisconsin, as the number 19 of Mike Larison. Ari looks like he just stepped out in turn number three. Give him credit. He hung onto the car and stayed in the gas. Yeah, he definitely uh, just lost on the entry, but good job keeping off the wall. So he will restart, but he is a few laps down. It's that short track background, you know. <laughs> He's a guy used to wheel in a sprint car, maybe a midget or a silver crown car around look at uh, this right here. short track dirt. So we're getting ready to go back to... Saavedra, to, a very good restart. Boy, really did. Here look on the at restart. Saavedra. 18 laps oh. will be complete at the line. Here comes Saavedra on the outside, Ari. Not going to do it. I think that, I think that, yeah. 
Boy, Tristan Vautier, our race leader, our pole sitter, Ari, before that caution came out in the first 13 laps, he had built his lead as Carboni is going to work trying Munoz. to get past Munoz. Vautier, Ari, in those first 13 laps had built up a 2.2 second lead on Saavedra. Yeah, Vautier coming out a little bit strong here. Look at Esteban Guerrieri yeah. trying to make a move down the inside. Carbone. He's got him. Carbone on the top side here. No, Looks like no. we'll keep the momentum. Carbone was slow a little bit uh, trying to make that pass on, on Munoz. Wow. So that's and Guerrieri. What, yeah. Looks like he might back up a little bit. Ari, that's surprising having that inside line. I thought he had him cleared for sure. Yeah, it's definitely different, different one and two from three and four. Uh, Gary Ari dominated here last year, but now he's struggling a little bit with the car, and you can you can see that if you don't have a well-balanced car here, the best driver can't make up the difference. Gustavo Jakobin using some racetrack. Look at the 22 of David Ostella trying to go side by side. Once again, that's Gary Ari in the blue and white car. He is our championship leader, and Ari led all 100 laps here a year ago, but has not had a good day here at the mile in terms of practice and qualifying. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you have to have such a solid car underneath you here because the, the oval is so challenging and so demanding on the setup that you need to have a really good car underneath you. Otherwise, the best driver can't make up that difference. So Stella racing Alain Day pretty hard there a couple of laps earlier. Alain Day it came out here in the first few practices was pretty quick, and uh, he's, he had a, a bit of a bad qualifying effort, so now he's trying to make up some spots. Okay, Ari, what can you do if you start this race and you realize your team may have gone in the wrong direction setup-wise? Can you change the car very much as this is Larison getting lapped now, the driver right. that brought out the caution as all the cars now are moving past him, and Larison now finds himself, what is it, four laps down? Yeah, Brian Clawson, we keep our eye on him. Of course, Jake Query talked to him before the start of the race, and Brian Clawson, who's coming off of a win uh, just uh, a couple of nights ago, in the Indiana Midget Week event that was run at Lincoln Park Speedway in Putnamville, Indiana, quarter mile dirt, and now here he is racing at the mile. Clawson right now, though, has backed up. He's yeah, gone he from, was eighth. Yeah, he, he went to eighth, and now he's dropped back to tenth. I think he had a bad restart. We didn't see that, but um, yeah, Clawson, you know, coming off of running in the, at Indy as well. So yeah. this is definitely a, a lot of driving for him in the last few weeks, and it's a shame that he's down there in tenth, but. Um, you know, very talented driver, and I'm sure we'll see more of him. Yeah, there he is in the 24. Of course, he is the two-time USAC National Drivers Champion, and because of that, he's been able to put that scholarship money to work this year in the Indy 500. Look at Tristan Vautier. Built up a sizable oh, lead here. And I really think Saavedra has been really good on restarts, but when it gets going, Munoz is actually the quicker of the AFS cars. So let's see if uh, that battle you know, can evolve a little bit. Well, it's only taken Vautier since the restart four laps to build the lead back to 1.6 seconds. And we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but the drivers have a few different adjustments they can do in the car. They have their, their weight jacker and they have their front and rear roll bar. Those are three tools that they can use to change the car's handling throughout the race. So those are things that the more experienced drivers have a handle on, but Vautier is doing an excellent job. Well, we've got seven drivers that have raced here at the Milwaukee Mile before. Carlos Munoz is not one of them. And Munoz right now trying to chase down his teammate, Sebastian Savater. This is the battle for second place. And Munoz's team said, you know, he's a very, very good driver on ovals. And that came to a surprise to them. And he's taken to it well. He did that amazing pass at Indy that put him, you know, up in the podium position. And now he's putting pressure on, you know, his more senior, more experienced teammate in Savedra. Uh, Gary Ari, of course, we told you he has a previous start here. One led all 100 laps last year. Saavedra started here in 2009. He started fourth. He finished third. Yakuman is the only driver in the field, Ari, with two starts here as uh, he was fourth in 2009 and fifth here in, in 2011. Good Calvis has a start. So does Clawson, who was racing here last year. Ostella and Carboni, all of those drivers have been here. Everybody else, they're tackling the mile for the first time. Bit of a learning experience for him. Well, road course drivers tend to really like this track. You know, it, it does race a lot like a road course, like you said, just because of the, the very minimal banking. And um, you really have to drive hard and work hard here to be fast. Carlos Munoz in that 26 car trying to chase down his teammate Sebastian Saavedra. And Munoz right now outside of the top five in the championship needs to make up some points here. And uh, 
If you'll notice, Munoz taking his line a little bit shallower, a little bit lower than Saavedra to get a little bit of clean air on his wings. That enables him to drive closer and to be in position to make that pass. And Munoz is one of the guys that I've seen run the lowest through three and four. So if he, if he can use that to his advantage, he might be able to get close enough to make that pass. Okay, now, Ari, we know on super speedways that two cars running together are generally faster than one car running by itself. Okay, you've got Vautier right now, a Sam Schmidt Motorsports car, attempting to run away a bit here. He is uh, is looking at a 1.8 second lead over teammates Saavedra and Munoz. Can they work together to be faster than Vautier? Or does it work on a short oval like this? Unfortunately not. That only works when you're in a situation when you're flat out all the time and you're using that draft. Here, you might be flat for a few laps, maybe one or two laps after the green flag, and then you really have to start lifting and maybe even braking a little bit. I mean, this is a tough track. I mean, you're not averaging more than, a, you know, just a, over 140 miles an hour. These cars are capable of doing nearly 195. Well, Saavedra right now is able to keep Vautier in his sight, but Ari, make no mistake, there's 25, 30 car links separating them, and he wants to make sure he doesn't get away. 32 of 100 complete. Tristan Vautier is the leader at the mile. Firestone Indy Lights on the NBC Sports Network. Mike King, Ari Leyendijk Jr. Watching Tristan Vautier, the Frenchman. He won Ari the Star Mazda Championship last year, earned the scholarship to make his way through the road to Indy to this level, and he is making it pay off. Won his very first race in the series and now making a serious bid for his second win. So the Mazda Road to Indy for Tristan Vautier right now looking real good. There's second place, Sebastian Saavedra, and third place, Carlos Munoz, as they try to chase down that 77 car. Yeah, Saavedra's actually picked up the pace a little bit. The gap is still at 2.2 seconds, so Vautier is a healthy gap. Yeah, and talking about the road to, to the Mazda Road to Indy, it's, it's such a great program. You know, drivers, there's so much talent out there. And for for Carters, for, for Formula Mazda, for Indy Lights, to get them to IndyCar, there needs to be a clear path, and, and they've created that, which helps all young drivers. Of course, USAC and F2000, also a part of the road to Indy. Star Mazda has uh, been a big part of that as well. And uh, certainly Tristan Vautier has turned some heads. And so is this guy, Sebastian Saavedra as Saavedra came to Firestone Indy Lights as a wet-behind-the-ears 18-year-old rookie four years ago, are in IndyCar full-time. Last year, when that opportunity went away, Sebastian Saavedra decided, hey, I cannot stay out of a race car. And when Gary Peterson and the AFS Andretti situation came together, he decided to put his ego on hold, step down a rung on the ladder, run this series full time, and also dabble in the Izod IndyCar series with this same team. I think it's going to pay off for him. I think that's a great strategy. I mean, ultimately, oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Larison oh, again man. into the wall. And you know, we, we, we talked a little bit about it. He didn't come in the pits yeah. for tires, and he had bald, you know, flat spots on those tires, and it, and it must have been hard for him to handle that car. Oh, man. So uh, he brought out the first caution. Working lap 14. Looks like he's okay, though, so that's good news. Uh, he has, though, damage. You can see the, the black spot there on the wall as, uh, as he did make contact this time. That first caution, Ari, he made no contact at all, but this one is going to cost a few dollars to fix. Yeah, it's unfortunate for yeah, him. He was off the pace, and I think he was six laps down at that point. So Wow. But what this does do is set up another great restart. You know, I think that... Savager could really take advantage of this, so we'll see what, what, what comes out of that. It's pretty, it's pretty clear, Ari, at this point, that's where Savager is going to have to get him. <laughs> yeah. You know, as uh, here's the replay. Let's watch what happened to Mike Larson. Well, it's the exact oh, same yeah. place. Yeah, he just lost it. All right, that's the exact same spot that, 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 that he lost it before. Exact same spot. Wow. Turning into three here, about mid corner, a little bit high, but not out of the racing line, and in the back end just. Just snaps. Yeah, so the Royal Purple car finds the wall and uh, RA4. For, so. for what has been a single day show for Firestone Indy Lights, uh, a particularly long day for Mike Larison because he had an incident in a practice session. This is his third incident on this day. Yeah, so. tough, tough for him. I don't know if he tested here, but obviously, you know, he can walk away from this. And uh, it's a shame because Milwaukee's a tough place. Yep. And to, for these guys to come here, practice, qualify, and race in one day. 
you know, is, is tiring mentally, fit in the setup, it can make for a very long race. He's run here before in a, in a USAC Silver Crown car, but uh, this is his first experience in the rear engine car. He's from Avon, Indiana, driving that Bellardi Auto Racing Royal Purple car. So our second caution brought out by the same driver that brought out the first, Tristan Vautier. He's going to have to hold off Saavedra on the restart. Cleanup is nearly complete. Time to go back to green flag racing. Firestone Indy Lights on the NBC Sports Network. Mike King, Ari Lyon Dyke Jr. and Jake Query with you. Tristan Vautier, once he gets away on starts or restarts, he is tough to catch. But question wow. is, will he get away from Sebastian Saavedra cleanly this time? And they're going to wave this one off, Ari. Yeah, he started like midway through the back straightaway. Yeah. That was very early. So they obviously recognize that right away. So. Hopefully they can line them up properly. And they have a, a specific area where they need to restart. And if you go before that, they'll wave the yellow again and, and try right. it again. Interestingly enough, during that yellow, while we were away, we saw Brian Clawson pull the car onto pit lane, a wing change, a rear wing change to the 24 car. Yeah, and, that, and that's a smart move because he's, you know, in 12th right now. There's only 12 cars in the race, so might as well make a change, and then hopefully the car works a lot better. He was able to stay on the lead lap, obviously. Looks like this may be a little bit cleaner. This does look cleaner. Saavedra, a very good run again. His restart gears must be phenomenal. Will he get him? Doesn't look like so. he's going to have a shot this time. No, clear into one. But he's very, very close here, so let's see if he can keep his foot in it. And get a They'll see the cross flags as they come to the stripe this time, so 50 of 100 laps will be complete. Tristan Vautier trying to do what his teammate Esteban Guerrieri did one year ago, Ari. That's start on pole and lead all 100 laps. Wow, look at that gap. He's already opened up one lap. So Very competitive here 50 today. 50 of 100 complete. Stavo Yakuman and Esteban Guerrieri. They've been going back and forth with each other. That's a good group right here. Very tight knit. Um, obviously, Yakuman is, you know, coming off a very good win in Detroit, looking to keep up with good results and uh, he's definitely in, in the hunt right now. Alain Day in the red and white number nine car. He is also trying to, to get his car in the hunt as he tries to pull up on Yakuman. Those drivers right now, Gary Airy running fifth, Yakuman running sixth, and Day running seventh. Yeah, Day's uh, moved up a few spots from where he qualified, so that's good. As we see uh, Yakuman sort of poking his, his car out there to let Gary Airy. 48 laps will remain at the line. Firestone Indy Lights and Ari, it's a 12 race season with the completion of this race will be at the midway point important to do well at Milwaukee because in just a matter of a few days you're in Iowa racing on yet another short oval important to load the car onto the transporter in one piece after this event. Yeah exactly and, and the setups for here in Iowa are very different but you know obviously not a lot of time in between races and now we're getting to that point where in the season halfway you're thinking about points you're thinking about your results and you're stacking yourself up against everybody else and um, you know this is the first of one of two ovals so everyone looking to capitalize Vautier has already worked his way back to a one second lead and Aria I'm, I'm curious you've had good race cars before do you spend a lot of time when you have a good race car looking in your rear view mirrors at the guys trying to catch you or does it not even concern you I really, I mean, if you're leading like this, um, you just basically rely on your spotter to let you know, okay, he's 10 back, no pressure, no pressure, and you're looking forward. You're concentrating only on what you need to do in the car to make yourself as quick as possible, and that's exactly what Vautier is doing right now. He's built up a nice, a nice two-second or one-second gap, and now he's just going to try to stretch that. Uh, here is Tristan Vautier, as we told you earlier, the leader, won the season opener. The 2011 Star Mazda champion, so he takes his scholarship money, winds up with Sam Schmidt, and he has made the most of it as Vautier right now second in the championship. And let's remind everybody that since he won pole, he did pick up a bonus point. So Ari, the, the margin goes from 15 to 14 as far as Gary Airy and the lead that he had coming into the weekend. Of course, Sebastian Saavedra, we talked about a bit earlier. Saavedra runs second. In the AFS Andretti Autosport car, and there he is. His car number 27. Back a little bit. Yeah. Climbing back just a little bit, catching you know a few tenths. He's under a second now to the gap, and uh, it looks like he's you know picked up the pace, and his teammate is falling back a little bit. Yeah, and his teammate Carlos Munoz, sixth in the championship, driving that number 26 car, 
And let's face it, Ari, Carlos Munoz seems to be gaining on it each and every week. Munoz, uh, who is like his teammate Saavedra from Bogota in Colombia, uh, this, this driver just seems to be getting a little bit better, a little more confident each and every week. I was very impressed with him at Indy, and it, now he's definitely showing us that he is a, a contender on these ovals. Victor Carboni, the Brazilian, currently running in fourth place with that Sam Schmidt Motorsports entry. You know, Victor is by no means out of this championship, but Ari's going to have to make something happen. You know, he's, he's currently 49 points back, so fourth yeah. in, in the title hunt. Only, only problem is he's, he's trying to chase down one of his teammates. And he's been pretty consistently up front. I mean, towards the front of the pack. I mean, he's, he's had a lot of good finishes throughout the season, but he's, you know, he told me that he really wants to make an impression. He really wants to win. Well, here's the guy he's chasing. He's got him behind him right now, Esteban Guerrieri, who is the only driver so far this season, Ari, to wind up in victory lane twice as he won at Long Beach, big wing form, and then followed that up, coming from the back of the pack to win at Indy. So Esteban Guerrieri, as we mentioned, right now with a 14-point lead in the championship. Yeah, such a sensational win in Indy, and uh, right now sitting fifth, so still good for points. Gustavo Jakobin, the only driver in the field who has two previous starts here at the Milwaukee Mile, and Gus, I tell you, Ari, I really believe what we saw him do at Detroit with the win at Belle Isle, I think it signaled a new level of maturity in his driving. Alex Lloyd, the former Firestone Indy Lights champion, uh, coaches him and believes the same thing, that, that Gus may have turned a bit of a corner. And he's still just 21 years old, Ari. He's got a long way to go. Alain Day running uh, behind him, of course. Alain uh, from Ashdod, Israel, and that Bellardi auto racing machine uh, right now was shown in seventh place. Behind him, the driver from Naples, Ontario, David Ostella, currently shown in eighth place. And you've got Jorge Goncalves, who runs ninth in the four car, fielded uh, by Bellardi. And Juan Pablo Garcia in the 76 car is Juan Pablo from Mexico City in that Jeffrey Mark Motorsport entry. We told you about Brian Clausen, who is making his second appearance in the series this season after running in the Indianapolis 500, really his first appearance in Firestone Indy Lights, I guess I should say, as uh, Clausen ran at, at Indy. And, and then, you know, Oliver Webb, and this is a driver who's a, a little bit mystifying because Ari, for Oliver Webb out there in the seven car, driving for Sam Schmidt, high expectations, and he has run into a bit of a, a bit of a speed bump, if you will, uh, pardon the, the pun. Yeah, I've, talk, he, I've talked to Travis Gregg, who helps uh, spot for that team, and he said he's really struggling. Yeah. He's struggling with this oval, um, with Milwaukee in general. So it's a bit of a shame. His teammates, the, obviously the cars are quick, so they might, you know, they might need to share information a little bit better or, or help each other out a little bit more because Oliver Webb seems to be a little bit lost around Milwaukee. Yeah, and got off to a pretty strong start, and uh, like we said, expectations were high for him. So a quick pass through the field. Of course, Mike Larison, the only driver out of the race, uh, bringing out not one but two cautions, and uh, we saw both of those uh, a, a little bit earlier. As There he is. There's, there's Oliver Webb, and right now Ari running in 12th place, and he is 19 seconds behind the leader in that number seven Lucas Oil car, and well, that's yeah. That, it, yeah, but like I said too, you know, you could put the best driver in a in a bad car in Milwaukee, and you still are not going anywhere. So, who knows what the situation with Webb is? But he did struggle um, all day, and it's a shame to see him back here. But we're not accustomed to seeing that seven car back there that far, and uh, hopefully Oliver Webb's going to be able to work it out. No problems though for the double seven. Tristan Vautier, the leader at the mile. At the line, 72 of 100 laps. Complete Firestone Indy Lights action at the Milwaukee Mile, the Milwaukee 100 on the NBC Sports Network. Along with Ari Landyke Jr. and Jake Query, I'm Mike King. And Ari, we were talking about Alain Day a few minutes ago, the fact that he was having himself a pretty solid day. Well, that day was ruined by this uh, a few minutes earlier. Yeah, just entered turn three a little bit too fast and got into the gray. Look at really good save, though. He did end up just touching just the wall touching. and lost one position. He was up three positions from his starting spot. So yep. unfortunate incident, but that's just pushing a little bit too hard. And, and Ari, give us an idea. Once you lose a car in the gray like that on a short oval, oh, I what, mean, what does it feel like? It feels like you're on ice, and uh, the fact that he, he he did touch the wall, but the fact that he didn't uh, hit the wall hard, you know, that's a testament to his driving because how it's about, tough. How about the battle for sixth place? Uh, we've we've been watching 
David Ostella and Gustavo Jakobin. And yeah, Ari they're... twice, Ostella has been able to pull right alongside. Oh, look at them both just slide a little bit there on the entry or the middle of one and two. Ostella with a really good run here. We've seen him try this before. Let's see if it sticks. Look at this. He, he is alongside. You would think, oh, he's got him easy because he's got, he's got the got inside. Him. He's got him this time. Great side-by-side -side action here. Oh. Look at Gus squeeze him down a little bit. But he still doesn't have it. Hold on. Now I think he he's does. got him. Yep. yep. Ostella, great move. Let's see if Gus can come back at him through here. That's good patience, Ari, by David Ostella because he's probably been working Gustavo Jakobin for, what, the last seven, maybe eight laps? Yeah, exactly. So very, very good move there. I think he he definitely has the quicker car. It's so hard to pass here, and uh, for, you, for him to pull that off is good. Well, since that restart, uh, he is plus two, so good deal for David and Ostella. Look at, look at the gap he's opened wow. up. So that just goes to show you, if you're, oh, Gus is slowing. I think Gus is slowing. Yeah, I think there's a maybe an issue on the Gustavo Jakobin car. This oh, very interesting. Yeah. I mean, right at the apex there, it looked like the car was slowing, but now it seemed to have picked up speed again. Interesting. Well, certainly, Ostella has driven away from Jakobin. Yeah, that just just shows you that, you know, if you are a quicker car, it's still very hard to pass here. Kind of interesting because they are teammates. All right, do you, do you, do you take it a little easier on a teammate or do you drive oh, no. it just as hard? <laughs> you drive it just as hard, maybe even harder. Trying to prove something to the boss. Exactly. As long as you don't touch. Tristan Vautier, he's trying to become the third driver in the last four starts. Ari here at the Milwaukee Mile in Firestone Indy Lights action to lead all 100 laps. And he could take over the points lead with a victory here. So a very dominant performance. He needs to keep his concentration. Still a long way to go, over 20 laps. As it stands right now, if we were to throw the checkers on the field, Vautier would go to Iowa, Ari, with an eight-point lead as here's wow. Carboni and Gary Airy and Gary Airy. Very Got important that pass for Gary Airy here for the points. Uh, makes it makes it through, but some lap traffic. Yeah, here. they're pulling up on that oh, seventh car, Oliver, Oliver Webb. Webb. Interesting. Yeah, so Oliver Webb will get out of the way of his two teammates, Gary Airy and Carboni. The Carboni looks so strong in the beginning, and that now is definitely fading back, whereas Gary Airy has really turned it up here, and it now sits in fourth. You know what, though, Ari, is with 80 of 100 laps complete, you talked about in your winning ways tire management exactly yeah for those guys that have not taken care of their tires up to this point and have really pushed it and, and raced very hard what are they dealing with I mean this is the point of the race 20 laps to go where the tires do start falling off and Gary Airy his setup might be a little bit better than the rest of the drivers or he might have just not put as much you know pressure and it might have not driven as hard in the opening stages and now we're seeing that that car is coming alive and that's the best feeling to a driver when towards the end of the race your car is at its best so Gary Airy is fourth the last thing he wants to do is, is drop back any at this point because as it stands right now if his teammate Vote wins this race he's going to see his lead go away and he's going to drop to second Right. And there is Tristan Vautier who now holds a 1.2 second lead over Sebastian Saavedra who has really pulled away now from Munoz. Munoz is, is now two seconds behind his teammate Saavedra. Right, and Vautier, this is a pretty comfortable gap, but if he makes one mistake, that could really reel Saavedra back in. So he needs to you know, keep his composure and, and try to keep that second gap. Well, dominating drivers are nothing new to the Milwaukee Mile. Uh, last year it was Gary Airy who was in this position as he no. led 100 laps. Now no we see action. some lap traffic here coming yeah. up. Oh, absolutely. Which Do it. definitely could affect the race. So. There was no Firestone Indy Lights action here in 2010, but in 2009 it was Mario Romancini who led every lap. And then in 2007 it was Alex Loy who led every lap. So three of the last four races. A long day here making some moves. Wow, look at this. Yeah, a long day oh, all the way to Gustavo the inside Yacoman wall. Gustavo Yakuman drove, drove him all the way to the inside wall, and I, I have a feeling race control is going to have something to say to Gus about that. Oh, side by side Woo. through here to turn two. Looks like Gus still has the advantage here. I know that was a little bit low on oh. the inside wall there. But Alon Day is coming on strong even He's going to get him. He's going to get him. He's going to send Gus way up to the wall here in the gray. Maybe that was a little bit of a payback. Maybe. <laughs> Hats off to Alon Day. Give him credit because this comes 
just a handful of laps after he very nearly put it in the turn four wall. Exactly, he did touch the wall, so very good job for Alande. So Alande moves back to seventh as he gets around Gustavo Jakobin. Laps are winding down. Vautier still leads at the Milwaukee Mile. Well, just when we're ready to give the trophy to Tristan Vautier with 20 laps to go, the lead has disappeared, and here comes Sebastian Saavedra on the outside heading into turn number one. With just 13 remaining, Ari, this is a brand new ball game. I don't know. I don't think it comes down to tires. I think this is simply traffic. Vautier has not had to deal with this this whole race. Now he's in, in traffic, and the car is handling differently, and Saavedra is just sucking up the lead here. Is that the 76 of Juan Pablo Garcia, I believe, uh, running just in front of him? It is. And it is, and it shows you how much effect the arrow can have. Here and comes now look Saavedra. at Saavedra. Saavedra down to the inside. I don't know if he'll make it stick. Vautier is struggling here. Well, I already had the engraver putting Vautier's name on the trophy uh, a, a good uh, seven, eight, ten laps earlier. But now look at the Saavedra run. Saavedra needs to complete this pass before Vautier gets past Garcia. That is the key to this, this victory for Saavedra. So well, let's see if this unfolds. The flagman has shown Wow, Saavedra, the 76 another car. Move. He's shown the 76 car. Whoa. Oh, Saavedra with a wow. big wiggle. Oh, but oh, he, he saves it. He keeps it off the wall, but wow. this is going to give Vautier a chance to clear traffic and get away. Well, the flagman has shown the 76, the move over flag on back-to-back -back laps. That little wiggle there is going to give Vautier a little bit of breathing room. But here now, Saavedra's going to come in with a head of steam here. If he can get to Vautier before Garcia. Wow. Ten see how laps. Ten laps remaining, and here Victor Carboni and David Ostella. Ostella. Oh, my. This Looks is like close. Oh, and there's the wheel rub. We actually, they actually touch. Wow. Yeah, Ostella, though, on the outside, that yellow and white 22, and Carboni in the three. Could have been bigger than it was, for sure. Well, we've got less than ten laps remaining. This one could have changed two laps earlier, but Saavedra with the wiggle off of turn number two, Ari, and he's lucky to have saved it. Yeah, very lucky. Um, right now, we're looking at Ostella and Carbone. Yep, battle Ostella for fifth. has come on strong here towards the later stages, getting past Jakobin and uh, now moving through the field. Oh, baby. It, and, and, and this is exactly what you said that Saavedra didn't want to see, and that's clearing exactly. the, the Juan Pablo Garcia car before he did. And, and now Vautier is going to be able to drive away a bit. I think Vautier, now that he's clear traffic, will open up a gap. I think Saavedra knew that he well, needed to make Ostella. Him, Ostella on the outside of one and two. I think he's going to make it stick. Wow. Very good. Woo. He completes the pass. So David Ostella that goes to fifth. That outside line through one and two seems to be the better spot. Well, this this would fifth. be far and away his best finish of this 2012 season as Ari, he's been very aggressive, but here comes Saavedra. This is for the lead. Uh, vote. I think that I think that Saavedra needs to attack right now. I mean, I feel like he's in a Vote is in a vulnerable position. Maybe his tires are going off, and Saavedra definitely seems like the quicker car here. I thought when Vautier cleared the Juan Pablo Garcia car. I thought we were going to see him leave Saavedra. Me too. And it didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't happen. So this sets up a really good last final six laps here. Let's see if Saavedra can climb back and make a move. So Vautier looking to take over the lead if he can hold on to the win as he has led all 94 laps up to this point after starting on pole. Sebastian Saavedra had a shot at him a few laps earlier. Had the wiggle off of two. Now five laps remain as Ostella is going to try to go underneath Munoz to go to fourth, and he couldn't get it done. Wow, Ostella's car is just coming on fire here the last few laps. It seems like everyone's slowing down. Ostella has kept the same pace or might be even going quicker. David Ostella, really aggressive in these final 25 laps, and they're both trying to pull up on Gary Airy. This is incredible. These two cars right here are, are definitely coming alive. Look at Ostella's low line through here. And I they, think he's going to make it stick. Well, they're get, they've got to deal with the lap car, Ari. All three of them. Yeah, this could change things here. So Gary Airy, the car number 11, oh. he is your championship leader as Munoz is going to try to dive underneath him. Couldn't make it work this that time. This is going to slow him down coming off the corner. Oh, Munoz squeezed him on the high side there. That was a bit of a shame because Ostella had a huge run. Okay, so he's going to clear the lap car. Wow, the lap Gary traffic. Airy. The lap traffic playing a big factor in the outcome of this race. Here's Munoz. 
He'll clear him, and so will Ostella. So all three cars have now cleared the lap car of Juan Pablo Garcia. And with less than three laps remaining, Vautier hanging on as he has dodged not one, not two, but three bullets fired by Sebastian Saavedra. One thing, Ari, is for sure, if Vautier wins this race, he will have earned it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that traffic played such a huge part. Traffic here and the arrow off those lap cars affects the car so much. Well, the three drivers on track are the drivers that are occupying the top three spots in the championship. Vautier. I think in the background there, I think Ostella might have gotten around Munoz. Uh, we'll keep our eye out for Ostella. This is the race for the lead. They'll come to the line. Yeah, Ostella will... around Munoz. Yep. So Ostella is going to go to fourth. White flag is out. This is the final lap. Can Tristan Vautier hold off Sebastian Saavedra and lead all 100 laps here, Ari? He looks very comfortable going into three here. Got about a five car length gap. And he's, he's rounding the bend here, so I think he's going to do it. Sebastian Saavedra will try to catch him, but it's not going to happen. Tristan Vautier will take the twin checkers at the oldest continually operated racetrack in the world. Big win for the Frenchman as he finishes by three-tenths of a second in front of Sebastian Saavedra. Esteban Guerrieri comes home in third. David Ostella. Boy, great a great drive. race for Ostella. The final 25 laps for David Ostella. Uh, he, he's going to remember yeah. those for a while. The Vautier having so much pressure towards the end of that race. What a great, great, consistent race from him. Was under a lot of pressure at the end there and didn't crack. Congratulations. So Vautier... Strong from start to finish, as it looked like at one point he may run away from the field. Certainly the cautions did a lot to, to change that. But this is four times in the last five years, Ari, that a driver has started on pole here at Milwaukee at Firestone Indy Lights and has led all 100 laps. I'm not going to say it's easy, but when you're on pole, you definitely have a distinct advantage. And it usually comes down to restarts and traffic. And Vautier was able to nail both those two factors and won today's race. Well, it looked like Sebastian Saavedra had a shot at him, but a little wiggle off of turn two means that that man, Tristan Vautier, is going to go to victory lane at the Milwaukee Mile. A truly international podium here at the Milwaukee 100 as the Frenchman, Tristan Vautier, winds up on the top step. The driver from Colombia, Sebastian Saavedra, winds up on the second step, and the driver from Buenos Aires, Argentina, is on the third step, David Ostella. What a charge the driver from Canada put on in the final 20 laps of this one as he drives to his best finish of the season, fourth. Munoz was fifth. Carboni winds up sixth. Day was seventh. Gustavo Jakobin strong early to drop back a bit in uh, the final 25 laps. And you see the rest of the field as now everyone gets set to head to Iowa. But before we can do that, let's hear from our winner, Tristan Vautier. For the second time this season, Tristan Vaudier has gone flag to flag for victory. And the Firestone Indy Lights, the first at St. Petersburg, and now he finds himself in DHL Victory Circle in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So the first oval win, and indeed, worth celebrating a team victory, a milestone victory for the team. Tristan, let me get you over here real quick as he wants to come around the celebration. This is the 50th career win for Sam Schmidt Motorsports, and what a celebration, a well-deserved team celebration. Congratulations. Man, I'm so happy. I'm, I tell you, I didn't sleep this night. I was so excited to come to this race, and I don't know, I just, I just wanted to get out there. I think I slept four hours. I was just jumping in my bed. I couldn't wait to get out there, and it was just good. The car was great. Uh, got a bit sketchy at the end, of course, you know, 100 laps on the, the tires. Yeah, I just can't wait to get back in the car next week, and, uh, and try to push hard. The Star Mazda champion, Tristan Bodie, now a winner for the second time in the Firestone Indy Lights. Sam Schmidt, by the way, was not at this event. He will be next week in Iowa. It'll be a big celebration for win number 50. Okay, Jake, thanks. Uh, so uh, with the win, Tristan Vautier will move to race number seven with the championship lead in hand. Esteban Guerrieri second in the title chase and Sebastian Saavedra winds up third as far as the championship standings go after 100 laps of racing. Hey, want to remind you that uh, you'll be able to see Saturday night's race from Iowa right here this Saturday night uh, on NBC Sports Network, so we uh, hope you are going to join us. 100 laps, all led by Tristan Vautier, so he will have all sorts 
of positive momentum and motivation at his back as he is our new championship leader. Congratulations to him. For Jake Query and Ari Leyendijk Jr., I'm Mike King. So long from the Milwaukee Mile.